the elements of financial statements, assets and liabilities are the primary. Actually, assets have conceptual primacy in the conceptual framework. It doesn't mean assets are the most important thing. It is just when you start from a conceptual basis, where do you start to think about elements? And the answer from a conceptual point of view is assets. Assets are resources controlled by the entity as a result of past events from which expected inflow of economic benefits will occur. Liabilities is basically the opposite. It's a present obligation arising from a past event from which you're expected an outflow of economic benefits. The framework says that equity is assets minus liabilities. Income and expense are derived from changes in assets and changes in liabilities. There are changes in assets and liabilities that result from transactions, events, and other circumstances other than transactions with equity holders in their capacity as equity holders. And again, the framework says it identifies the conceptual primacy of assets and then liabilities because that is the way it is structured so that we can measure income and expense in the best possible way. It doesn't mean that there is a balance sheet perspective in financial reporting. I'll come back to that later. In terms of uh, recognition, the framework talks about using a cruel basis of accounting, and we recognize one of these elements, an asset or a liability, income and expense, when the elements satisfy the definition that I just mentioned of that element and additional recognition criteria. So something meets the definition of an asset, but then we ask ourselves the following two questions. Is it probable that benefits will flow to or from the entity? And has does this asset have a cost or value that can be me measured reliably? If the answer to those two questions are yes, then the item is recognized in the financial statements. So first the de definition and then the recognition criteria. Now, this phase, part of the framework is a little, has been a little bit problematic when people are trying to understand it because we're not sure, people are not quite sure what the word probable means. Does it mean any positive probability? Does it mean more likely than not? It's, a, it's un, undefined. And as a result, the meaning of the word probable has been left to be determined at the standards level. And as, when any time you do that, you run the risk of having inconsistent definitions across IFRS, and I, admittedly, we, we have this. And when we have the framework project, the board has a framework to revise and update, complete and converge the framework at the moment, and, and nailing down the, what the definition of probable means in the context of the framework is something that's high on the board's list for clarification in this project. Measurement is the process of determining the monetary amounts at which the recognized elements are carried, that the amounts that are in financial statements. Now, it is true that IFRS measurements are largely based on estimates, judgments, and models. There are very few numbers in the financial statements that don't involve estimates, judgments, or application of models. I think cash and the domestic currency is uh, is about it. Everything else requires judgments, even estimated useful lives of property, plant, and equipment, and depreciation methods in terms of consumption of economic benefits. Unfortunately, even though measurement is a very, very important and one of the primary tasks that financial reporting standards do, the measurement portion of the framework is fairly weak. There's not much in the way of concepts there, and as a result, writing a measurement chapter for the framework is part of the IESB's current project, framework project. The measurement part of the framework at the moment really simply lists out some of the measurements that we currently use, not all of them, but some of them, and, but it gives no conceptual guidance to the IESB or to preparers to guide them in selecting a particular measurement in any particular situation. And that's what the concepts should do in the terms of measurement. As a result, the measurement, is, again, is determined at the standards level, like the definition of the word probable. And because of that, we have inconsistent use 
across IFRS, and I'll explain some of that, show you that in a moment. With respect to assets, measurement ultimately depends on classification and recognition. So if you look at this slide, we start at the center, we have an asset. The first thing you have to ask yourself is, what kind of asset do we have? How do I classify this asset? Do I classify it as property, plant, and equipment, or intangibles, or investment property? Is it a financial asset? Is it a deferred tax asset? The type of asset classification determines recognition and measurement. So once I decide that I have a financial asset, for example, the next circle is initial measurement. If you look out to the bottom right-hand side, you see the financial asset, the initial measurement is at fair value. If you look sort of opposite it, you see inventory in the initial measurement is cost. Some are cost, some are fair value, and some are something in between. If you look at deferred tax asset, it depends on tax rates. It's undiscounted. Defined benefit plan, there's a complex calculations in IAS 19 as to how to calculate defined benefit plan assets. So classification determines initial measurement, and then if you go to the outer circle, you see subsequent measurement. And again, subsequent measurement depends on the classification. Sometimes it's cost, sometimes it's fair value, sometimes it's lower cost, net realizable value, sometimes it's recoverable amount. Intangible assets, of course, internally generated, we don't recognize at all. So there is no measurement attribute. So we have to think about what we have in standards today, and hopefully someday we'll get a completed measurement chapter in the framework, and we'll have more consistency of measurement, or at least know conceptually why we are measuring different things in different ways. This slide does the same exercise for liabilities. Again, it depends. The first thing you have to do is take the liability and classify it. Once you've classified what type of liability it is, the second circle tells you what the initial measurement is, which depends on the classification. And then again, the outer circle is subsequent measurement that also depends on the classification. And as you can see from these two slides, we have a wide variety of types of measures in financial statements today, which makes it difficult for users of financial statements. It also makes it difficult for students to understand how to think about IFRS. <laughs>